There are uh, plenty of visits going on, plenty of offers happening. The offers mostly right now are going on to these guys in the future. But uh, the visits that are happening right now, Indiana expecting uh, Mr. Mbako on the 5th and 6th, which is Derby Derby weekend, Oaks and Derby Day, right. uh, ironically. but uh, And it's graduation day for Indiana uh, on top of that. So kind of odd, but I guess they're doing whatever they can, whenever they can. Then he's going to come to Louisville. I don't know when that's going to happen, but is he just going to come from Indiana to Louisville? Uh, do you know? Yeah, I don't know. That would make sense. I mean, is he at Kansas right now or is that over? Uh, you know what? I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, he was at St. John's over the weekend, then Kansas, then Indiana, then Louisville. And then I guess a decision is expected not long after that. So I don't have any idea how to rank them. Um, if I had to guess, I would say, yes, me, I'd say Louisville's in the, in the strongest position, getting the last visit and the pre-existing relationships he might have there with uh, with Kenny Payne, but we'll see. Louisville has been surprising with the visits they've gotten and the commitments they've gotten. I'm, I'm a little surprised, but something that, that John kind of jogged my mind about earlier, and I don't mean this in a, in a, in a nefarious way, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of guys that Adidas – have NIL deals with Trey Jackson Davis, Jalen Huchifino were two sure. of those last year. And Louisville is one of Adidas's flagships, uh, Indiana being one of those, Kansas. Right. Um, and, and because, and there aren't a whole lot of those. But I think that I'm wondering if there isn't some feelings by Adidas of, hey, we feel bad about what happened, about what happened to the program and the people and are, or, Maybe they're able to get more help from Adidas uh, NIL-wise to land some of these guys. But how, how are they doing so damn well after such a horrible season? Um, well, I mean, two of the commitments they got were before the season. And I'm not sure they're doing – I mean, they got the big kid who decommitted from Minnesota. That was a little bit of a head-scratcher. But I think that um, Kenny Payne had a pre-existing relationship with maybe one of his coaches. Um, I'm trying to, who else have they got that makes you think they're having that, that great of a recruiting, they got the, the junior who reclassified and that's another that guy, not, Kenny, Kenny paint, Trent flowers has a heat of relationship with him. A, a lot of it is the relationships he built when he was recruiting at Kentucky. He's connected with a lot of different people. He's got the one player from NBA Africa. He's been over there to recruit that he's working that, um, you know, that, that's what I would say it would be. Kenny Payne is connected from his days. Co uh, recruiting from John Calipari and his time at Oregon. He was very well liked within the, the Nike uh, community when he was, when he was out there at Oregon. So you know, the Louisville fans really have sort of the same attitude that Indiana fans have at this point is like, when are you going to recruit a guard and when are you going to recruit a shooter? Both fan bases are looking for the same thing. And, and, and McBacco is neither. <laughs> well, exactly. But uh, Indiana does, uh, have a, a guy that they are on that they are definitely trying to get into the fold. Is, is that Dingle? Dingle? Yeah. And have, is there any would. progress been made on that? I mean, have they even uh, talked to him? You know what? I haven't seen it, but I, I hope for Indiana's sake that they're keeping it quiet this time. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I really do. I, I, I think, well, Anyway, it's the old uh, business thing of, you know, you under promise and over deliver. Uh, that way people think, wow, they really went to work there. When you over promise and under deliver, then people look at it as a failure. So I think all the publicity that came out about Ludlam and Connect and Timberlake and whoever else got people pumped up thinking they were going to get at least one and maybe two of those guys. And when they got none, uh, when you have a fan base as rabid as Indiana's is, disappointment is usually the reaction to that. So. I know that at Louisville, they keep uh, all of it under the hood. They don't like talking about any of it to anybody. And I know that one time word got out last summer that uh, Nolan Smith, one of the assistant coaches, would he was headed overseas to, wa to watch DJ Wagner. I think Jeff Goodman tweeted it out. And I know that Kenny Payne wasn't happy about that. He, he likes to keep the recruiting business private. Who was he not happy with? <laughs> 
He was not happy with, I think, the, that Jeff Goodman got the information, however he got it. Yeah. Um, but I think that's how it should be. Because I agree. You only, I agree. You only bring problems when you do otherwise, especially when it, it's that information is doled. But um, they, they kind of put themselves in a bad position because I don't think they made any bones about the fact that they were kind of all in on those two guys uh and love them and connect yeah and yeah. then when you when you don't get that that's first of all it's a bad look because you went all in and failed but but before that it was a bad look that you went all in because you're telling everybody else and they're like all right whatever you know they're they're going someplace else and um so yeah it's but I think it's going to work out fine for Indiana, if especially if they were able to land this kid. I, I think he would just Dingle. boom. Yep. But yeah, you I put think him right in place. He'd be the perfect addition to the team, in my opinion. Uh, and with what they have coming in, I, I think that uh, maybe Cups and and Guy Newton may not. Maybe they're not your average freshman. They're not five stars, but um, maybe that they're able to do something. Neither are were Braden Smith and uh, Fletcher Lawyer. They're not five star guards, but they started for an entire Big Ten season, and right. and got through that. Indiana has uh, Caleb Gunn, Caleb Banks rather, who every time he came in, you can tell this is a dude that wants to play, wants to get better. So I, I think that they're going to be fine. Um, we'll, we'll just see how they finish off these final pieces, and but that's also. Xavier Johnson has to be the same Xavier Johnson, too. Yeah. Well, he should be a better Xavier Johnson. Um, you know, I mean, I've seen a lot of guys come back from a fifth metatarsal injury and be okay. Uh, this is the sixth year of college basketball, and he should be mature. He's going to be the oldest guy in the team, maybe one of the oldest guys in the league, and you're playing against guys who aren't as physically or as mentally mature as you are, and you should have the upper hand most times. And we saw, I mean, really the last time we really saw him play an extended period when he was healthy was the way he played at the end of his first season at IU, and he was fantastic. He was a first-team All-Big Ten player, the way he played, you know, the last couple of games of the regular season in, in the Big Ten tournament because he shot the ball and ran the pick, pick and roll uh, very efficiently. So, and, and, you know, we've talked about this before. The, the way that they missed Xavier Johnson on defense terribly last season. Uh, because he was the defender at the point of attack, and he didn't let the opposing point guard get comfortable. Uh, and I'm not talking about steals. I'm just talking about making it hard for the guy to get into his offense and feel comfortable on the court. He had to, he had to respect the defense of Xavier Johnson. And no criticism of Jalen Hood Shafino, but we saw in the last game against Miami that he was, uh, you know, Miami didn't fear him, uh, and I think. Xavier Johnson in that game would have made a, uh, a a difference. Absolutely, Indiana adds Anthony Walker, uh, mm -hmm. another front court piece uh, from Miami. He has a ton of experience. Uh, he has NCAA Final Four experience, uh, which is always a good thing. You can't replace Trace Jackson Davis probably in a, in a, in its whole, but I, I think that they can replace him in the aggregate and maybe more. Uh, I think they've done that. I think they may have added rebounding with, with sparks and with Walker. Um, mm -hmm. You've definitely, I, you've given maybe some versatility with, with where uh, at seven foot with more length, but able to maybe step out. You've got Malik Renew coming back for a second year that you expect improvement after a good first year. So they're solid, and that should also, I think, be a be a a, a bait to to whomever else is going to fill those last two roles. Saying, "Hey, man, this team's kind of set and ready to go," and the coaching staff should be able to say, "Hey, all I need is you. I need you in this spot to make this team ready to go." And I agree. Before maybe those guys are looking at the team, going, "Yeah." I don't know. Maybe that's just part of it, and because I don't know what the difference maker is, I'm just guessing. 
Yeah, I mean, he should have plenty of things to sell. He should have this, the the to be able to sell. Look what I did for Jalen Hood, Shafino. Look what I did for Trace Jackson Davis. Both of those guys, um, Hood Shafino for sure is going to go in the first round, higher than he was projected to go before the season. Jackson Davis might go in the front first round, but wherever he goes, it's higher than he was projected to go before the season. So if that's important to you, uh, I can offer that. If you're a guard, I can offer playing time, and this is the role you'll have. I can probably offer a winning team because we got all these other pieces there, and I got a chance to play at a Big Ten uh, program in front of a you know a, a fan base that is dying for success. And if you come in there, you'll be remembered for what you did. I mean, and the NIL money has to be in there and be competitive. So they got a lot to offer. It's just a matter of whether they can get somebody to, to look at it that way. And going back to Walker, I mean, a lot of people have sort of yawned at that pickup because he didn't do much offensively last year. But I, I kind of like it because he's a good depth piece. He gives him a chance to mix and match with Sparks. I think Sparks is more of a power low post player. This kid is probably going to be more of a defender and a rebounder. And he's, again, this is another fifth-year guy who played at Miami and was coached by Jim Laranega, so he knows how to play. And he's gonna, and he, he has to know what the situation is he's walking into and saying, yeah, I'm cool with that. Uh, I, I just want to be part of a, of a good team. So, you know, I think it's a good pickup. He, he could be a good 10- to 15-minute guy off the bench. And if somebody gets hurt and he's got to play more than that for a few games, then because of the, he started a bunch of games in Miami a few years ago, he should be able to do that.